Hey guys, it's Brandon Miniman from PocketNow.com, and this is part two of the software tour of the Verizon VX6900. In this video, we're going to take a look at all of the touch enhancements made to the device, and there are many. HTC and Verizon have done a lot to make this device very touch-friendly, although there are some spots where it's still not that great. So let's take a look at a few of these examples. I'm going to go into context here and show you the flick scrolling. The iPhone started the whole flick scrolling thing, and now we have it in this device. Although it's not, it's not that good. It's got a little bit of physics, so if I flick faster, it'll go faster, and then it comes to a, a stop gradually. But it's not very precise, and it doesn't move very fast. I mean, this is as fast as I can get it to go. Fortunately, in the context list, we have this uh, letter chooser on the side, which makes it easy to get to, say, N quickly, and then move it up a little bit to find the particular number you're looking for. This can be turned on and off in the control panel. We also have this functionality in Pocket Internet Explorer. So if I go into that, we have pocketnow.com loaded here, and I can flick, and yeah, it went pretty fast there. I can kind of drag my finger across the screen slowly. Sometimes it selects the text if I don't do it at the right speed. Um, it takes a little bit of practice to get used to this. And also notice this, I'm in Pocket Internet Explorer full screen, and because I have no hardware buttons here, how do I get to the menus? Well, it took me a long time to figure this out. You have to continually press the up button until you get to the top of the screen, and then all the buttons show up. I wish there was an easier way to get out of this, but there's not, so that's a good tip to know. I'm going to get out of Pocket Internet Explorer. Now let's talk about the touch flow enhancements, because they're pretty neat. The way you bring up the touch flow cube is to start at the bottom of the screen and drag your finger upwards. And you can do this while you're in any program. So if we're in File Explorer and I flick my finger up, I get the same cube that I would get from the Today screen. So let me go through this cube. You flick your finger up to get it to appear, and you flick your finger down to get it to go away. You can also flip right or left, and there are only three sides to this cube, which of course doesn't make sense, but uh, I guess it doesn't have to. The first screen here is basically a shortcut uh, menu selector, so you can go to Internet Explorer from here, and let me get out of that, and then we can of course go to SMS, Notes, Voice Recorder, Communication Manager. I really don't use this, this part of the cube because you can access all these functions from your, from your Today screen. But the other sides of the cubes are pretty useful. This one will allow you to quickly dial a, a favorite person's number, and you can have a picture associated with their little icon here if you have a picture listed in their contact. From here, you can also enter your contacts by pressing this button. And let me go back in there. And we can delete people. We can go to the phone application. And go back in there. And recent calls. So that's a good place to come if you want to make a phone call and you don't want to scroll through all your contacts to find someone's number. This next pane, whoop, it's actually the other way. This next pane deals a lot with multimedia, and a lot is done to enhance the multimedia experience on the XV6900. Uh, nothing, nothing really is, is different in music. We go right to Windows Media Player, which does an okay job at playing music, but there are some better alternatives out there. And let me, and here we're back. Photos, they've done a lot with, actually. So check this out. Here's the updated TouchFlow photo gallery. And we can go to some of the stock pictures. And that's not oriented right, so I'm going to rotate it. I'll show you how I did that in a second. And just like the iPhone, we can flick to the right, or actually slide our finger to the right to get to the next picture. And there are a whole host of commands that you can use to, to manipulate the picture. So if I click, I tap on the picture and I click the eye, this shows you all the gestures you can do. So let's see, zoom in and zoom out is a circle. Okay, so I want to zoom in on this man's face. It's not always, it takes a lot of practice to get this right. So let me try again. Didn't work then. Mm, still didn't work. I guess I need to make better circles. Let me, nah, let me try it on another picture takes a lot of practice to get used to this. There we go. And then we can zoom out further. It, it rotated the picture again. And once you get the hang of the whole gesture thing, if you ever do, there are some other options that come up when you tap on a picture. So you can email the picture to someone. You can do a slideshow, which is pretty neat. And right now we're in slideshow mode, so it's kind of fading to and from the various photos on the device. I'm going to pause that and go back. 
into the gallery. I'm going to go back to this picture. Tap on the picture again. Uh, we can throw it away. We can assign a picture to a contact with that button. And we can just return to the gallery like so. And we can do the flick scroll to move around the gallery. Okay, now I want to take you through the camera application because I think it's especially well done. To launch the camera application, you press the shutter button here on the side of the device. And here we are. Let me move in a little bit closer. I've got a mug in focus. Now to change the mode of the shooting, we tap on the screen and we press the right button in the upper left corner. So this looks like emailing a video. There's a picture of an email and a camera. And then we click again and we are in contact. So if you want to take a, a picture of a contact to assign to the touch flow cube, you can do it here. And there's some novelty effects and that sort of thing. You also get a zoom setting. This has 2x digital zoom. And we can go in increments of 0.2. And so now, right now, we are in maximum zoom 2. And with every mode, you get a few options here at the bottom of the screen. So if I press that arrow upwards, we can change the white balance, specify where the, the picture or video is stored, change the brightness, and also adjust the resolution between small, medium, and well, we're on a we're on video right now, so we can only go between small and medium. You get some more advanced settings if you press this button in the bottom right corner, um, such as metering mode, and we can we can specify whether there should be a shutter sound, if the backlight should be kept on, how long the the photo appears on the screen, and whether there is audio that gets recorded with the video. And to exit the camera application we press the X button here in the upper right corner. Before I conclude, I want to mention one thing about the scroll bars. If you are using the device with a stylus and not using the, you know, the flick scrolling, which is uh, okay, it's not, it's not great. Um, because the screen is flush, there is no divot on the right side to rest your stylus against when you're trying to drag a scroll bar. So if you're dragging a scroll bar without looking, which I often do with other Windows Mobile Pro devices, um, you may go off the screen here. You see that? you got to actually look at the scroll bar and make sure you're following it along because there is nothing to rest your stylus against with the flush screen. Something to get used to. It's not really that big of a deal, but it may bother people that use Windows Mobile touchscreen devices and are very used to operating scroll bars without looking at them. So that's it for the touch enhancements on the Verizon VX 6900.